So I now go into what my understanding or what I have been of the teaching of Patel or Ahlul Bay. This is the teaching, and I will explain to you how it, how it comes out in this one. They basically teach this that time is created backwards. The future is created first and unravels in, in the past. The time in the future asks the past, give me this material. I want to manifest this material. Give me the precondition so I can exist. So it then passes a call saying, here's my purpose. Give me the actual uh, causality of it. And, and what happens is every time it goes back in one era, it solidifies that era and moves on to the era before it and sees if that era is fully solidified, it stops there. If it's not fully solidified because there are still more causality necessary, it moves on to the next era. And it tends to do it according to um, 20,000 year cycles. And the reason is, is because it fits in very well with with the size of our galaxy. The size of our galaxy is a hundred thousand years, light years wide. So it does things in hundred thousand light years. So it fits the galaxy. And when it it cuts it, it cuts it into five parts in twenty thousand years. So every t so hundred thousand years from now, twenty thousand before then, which is eighty thousand from here, and then twenty thousand. What happens is, in order to solidify anything, um, what they say is we put words that are immutable. That's called the prophecies. Okay. We put words that are immutable. That word becomes the anchor to move on to the next step. And then we pass on through this our prophecies or our words that are anchoring. The Bible, part of it, the first part of the four Torah, is an anchor. Quran is an anchor. Mm -hmm. That as you go for the future, you'll find it actually unravels that way. Mm -hmm. Because that's how it's built. Okay? Now, as it comes to a, um, an anchor, what happens is a block is placed uh, uh, from the future side and the past side. That block acts as a funnel. And in the funnel you are not allowed to view into it and you're not allowed to view out of it. And in the funnel, everything that has happened, go in like a rope and go together inside the funnel. You think then they're going into the same place, but they're not. They're going into a very close area of proximity. That's what you have the timelines. Time, yeah, I was going to say. So. The timelines never disappear. What mm. happens is, they go to proximity so much that the effect of it is the same effect. But then later on they get split. Okay, uh, and, and just for the purposes of this, because we have talked about some of this, but we use a different language in a way, a different description. We would say that uh, there are many timelines, but that each, but there are uh, what you might call milestones, what you're calling funnels. Yeah, milestones um, in there, yes. Yes. In which uh, you must, you might also call them markers. In which those are major events which are lodged in time and that need to happen, like tent poles in a sense, yes. to hold up the rest. Yeah, but and the, so each has at each juncture there's there's some major tent poles. There are many timelines. Each one contains uh, bits of these markers, but the markers have to happen across the timelines. Yes, but when it happens, it also happens sequentially. Right. And when it happens sequentially, um, you can think of them as funnels, you can think of them... Uh, the word we use in Quran is, is we, we, are, we have put in gates, it's called gates, okay. before them and after them. These gates ensure that the flow of all actions go between these two gates. And in between those two gates, it's the Quran says, we will not allow them to see in or out of it. Right. The gate in here, in this world, in this time, in this time, started 2012. Yes, and that's when four people, remote viewers, st stopped being able to see, uh, if you paid attention to remote viewers, they often said they couldn't see beyond a certain point. And that's, that's what happened. Before 2012, they could see up to 2012, but they couldn't see beyond it after a certain point. 
So when it comes through this funnel, what happens is the true purpose of the timelines are revealed. Okay. Uh, the reason is the purpose of the timeline is revealed before then, they will get adjusted to it. Mm -hmm. So then inside it, you have then all the revelations necessary, but you cannot predict what happens inside until you go in. When you go in, then your predictions are accurate. Okay. But when you're outside, your predictions are not. So when you have a time, you have a time sequence, inside it, you can say, okay, with, you know, these are the major events, the major events now we are inside, I am now permitted to say these events are likely to happen now. Okay, and we are inside right now. Yes, Correct. because before then, our um, Patel or Ahlul Bayt said, until this um, time, anyone who says, until this event, which is the ISIS, when the ISIS came, exactly those what they say. Before ISIS, that's what they said. They call, it, they call them um, Sufyani. Before ISIS... Any predictions you make is wrong, and we were, and and we basically refute it. After ISIS, you are permitted to make predictions. But why ISIS? I mean, ISIS, we're not talking about the goddess ISIS. No, ISIS is the combination of everything that is exact polar opposite to Patel, the Hell Bait. Okay. Patel is all giving, all forgiving, all merciful, all spiritual. You can, whatever is all in the good side. Okay, the, can we describe Patel a bit more? Uh, are we saying, uh, in terms of Alex's work, I'm not even sure, Patel is what? Is this the Elohim? You're, you're right. There is a lot of confusion with names. Yes. Okay. It's Bet Allah, means the family of God. Okay. Okay. And the family of God, when everything is created... Um, I just do, I, I don't you know I can go on much. Right. Well, we're we'll trying I, to be very succinct here. Yes. Now, whoever created this universe created other universes as well. Let Let me ask. Let me put in a minute or two segue into the reasons. Okay. The whole of creation is an answer to a question or questions to answers. It's a, it's a mixture that says, okay, if this happened, what would take place? So it's a possibilities. All the possibilities are acted out. Mm -hmm. In order to act it out, we are the acting of one of these possibilities. And part of these acting out are the actors who then bring in the scenarios, act them out, and bring them and say, here is what we have. So they bring in truth. And when they bring in truth, they can only present a truth, two things, a truth and justice. It has to be just with, with, within it and with other uh, scenarios, and it would have to be truthful, it has to actually exist. You cannot use any kind of lies and whatever. So they create universes, and they create people, or souls, or split the main soul, so they, those can take actions and bring truth to the main gate which is the Hall of Records you have and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, you've heard of those things. Mm -hmm. These are basically uh, a, a citation of all the truth that are done in justice, given by the, um, the partition of the main soul or the main creator. So when a universe is created, a branch of that soul is made with trees coming off it. Normally, a branch, the, the universe is created this way, as per what the Patel say, they said, we come in with our group, with our supporters. We are the, the top and they are the, our hands. These are the Elohims. We create the foundations. We do all the roadworks in between the galaxies and whatever. And then we create groups of new branches and let them act it out. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we become the guides. Who is the guides? The Patel, including those who are the directly working for them as the Elohim. Mm -hmm. When there is a need to move things forward, Patel move to the most optimal place where all of the creation can be affected, which is our region here now. Mm -hmm. They bring with them 
the souls that have they've created long time ago who have helped them to set up so these are called the supporters mm -hmm. or the family and they call the Shiite the Shiite is this word this word means the supporters they bring in the supporters and the supporters are many layers the first one is directly associated with them the second one is supporter of the supporter and the third one is the supporter of the supporter of the supporter Okay. okay, so that's what what it is. And All right. So this. So when we were. Okay. So so to get back to where we were, in in terms of what's going to come next. Right. So basically, what they have done is, the revelation have taken place. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to the Illuminati. Why they use that? In the revelation, as you go back history, uh, a thread of uh, guarantee has been put, and that is in the lineage. Uh, of Abraham that is guaranteed not to be cut okay so as the ETs have come in and tried to make their own lineage they find it's always been cut but they realize that when they associate with the thread of Abraham be they uh, the Israelites or non-Israelites mainly the Israelites who are guaranteed in the Torah not to be completely disseminated uh, sorry uh, destroyed they have got themselves and attached to it in order for them to guarantee their existence as well. That's why you see you have a, a good um, God-fearing Jew and then you have uh, another family member from the, um, uh, what's called, from the black, uh, uh, what's called, um, the royal families, Blood. the black, uh, oh. the royal families that have come in. They have joined and married into this lineage. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. You think they are Jews. It's not. They've taken the cover off the sons of Israel in order to be protected while it's taking place. Hmm. And this is what Jesus referred to as the tares. You know, you have the main one, the child, the proper um, believing Jews. And then you have the tares, which are basically the uh, alien-driven agenda which go through these ones and they work with them and, and as Jesus says if I pluck them out you will be stuck to them I need to separate them you see mm -hmm. so a separation needs to take place and the only way to separate them is to make sure that all the good people like you and I and, and various other people are actually held back their, their light their goodness is held back for a while because the snakes and the lizards and the creepy crawlies, once they see light, they will keep in their burrows. So what has Petal and, and through, uh, God through Petal have done is made sure that there is not much light at the end, closer to the timeline. As, as much as possible, they are pushed away. Uh, if there are two people, uh, like yourself and your partner, you are too much light. One of you take away. Mm. Because you're not allowed to have a lot of light. If you have a lot of light, um, those negative entities uh, who are hypocrites uh, cannot um, come out and actually say that this is what we believe. This is how we take out the agenda. Because the main idea is they need to act out what they believe. That's the whole idea. Okay. They must act out what right. they believe. How do you do well, it? Well, to reveal this... themselves for who they are. Exactly. So if there are light people in there, they will not reveal themselves and they go in behind the scenes. So the light people were pushed away, pushed aside, put into a very difficult scenario that acts for them as uh, you know proof that... It's a kind of a shield, though. Yeah, we... The light people have been shielded. Right. Uh, it works two reasons, for two, two, two parts. Those who are in the light and the shielded who are now be persevering have earned the next step mm -hmm. because they have been true to that light. Mm -hmm. Those who are away from the light and once the darkness think that the light have, are weak and therefore now coming out and they mm -hmm. are revealing all kind of hideousness. Yes. But that is not enough. What has to be happen is not only must they reveal themselves, but they also reveal everything that has happened before. So all the technologies were given to them. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
Not only that, but they also have to reveal all the practices before. So they were given archaeology. If you've noticed, in the 1800s and 1900s, archaeology just boomed up. Mm -hmm. When the archaeology took place, they were encouraged to go and manifest those things. So then you see them actually doing all the rituals from, from the past. Mm -hmm. In order for those people in the past to have their representative in the now, acting out the hideous, hideousness of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And having people who will say that we are associated with them. That's why they went to Iraq to get the archite artifacts. Right. Because the artifacts is the physical representation of the past, people in the past, and that gives them uh, the, um, the authority to say, we now represent them in the past. That's why God allowed them to have all these artifacts to come in. Allowed them to also have all the scriptures to go with it, telling them how to do what they, are supposed to, what they did before. So they reenact them again. Mm -hmm. So they encapsulate that one. So now, if you say, is Babylon created? Yes. Babylon says, whoever does the act of Babylon takes the, architects, uh, the artifacts of Babylon, enacts exactly the same rituals as Babylon, has the same attitude and, and, the, you know, and behavior as Babylon, this is Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then all the demons and all the aliens and all that follow those artifacts because they are physical, they know what to do. And if they say, if somebody says, I'm your long lost slave, now I'm back again, why not? Everyone moves, shifts to them. Mm -hmm. Do you see this, this, this scenario going? Yes. That's what Timeline 2 was. Okay. Which was basically uh, the splitting of normal people, the splitting of the tears, where normal people, decent people, will keep going on line 1. Yes. The light is dimmed. Mm -hmm. Light, you know, uh, Timeline 2 is given more ability to start enacting things. Mm -hmm. It took them 250 years, I know. But that shows how deep in the black they were. Right. For 250 years then for mm. them to come up. And Illuminati okay. is just a manifestation of that. Okay. Um, now, because this is very well said, okay, so thank you for that. But, but at this point, just for the sake of the listeners, we need to tell them what it is you are going you are saying is going to happen that involves the return of nibiru why nibiru why uh, the brown dwarf with the mini solar system in essence um and so on how it going into the physics of what's happening in you know in your slides kind of yes we have to make a transition now and yes. then we will tie it all together okay the two timelines now have two societies one you call the breakaway society okay the society of the breakaway were encouraged to go underground. Well, that would Nib Okay, let's agree names. If Nibiru is a problem, Planetex. If Planetex is a problem, call it Nemesis. If ne Nemesis is a problem, call it Mini Solar. These are names. So it doesn't matter historically who the name is. I tend to call it Planetex because it doesn't have lots of baggage associated with it historically because of the Nibiru race or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's why I use Planet X, is because it doesn't have historical context to it. And let's go to the physics of the, the two timelines and how the physics then works out. The Planet X or Nibiru, whatever, is coming and is threatening them. They cannot go anywhere. So they built in their own habitation. Okay, separate. wait. Planet X is threatening who? It's, plan it's, it's, it's threatening the solar system. Um, Planet X has uh, a thick atmosphere that is boiling off of uh, iron oxide. That iron oxide is heavily uh, electromagnetic. Uh, it interferes with electromagnetism. It also uh, interferes with light and, uh, and it also interferes with um, um, gate, um, uh, what's called? Stargate technology, teleportation, anything to do with space, anything to do with even viewing in, in other realms, because it has a, 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 a dispersing of electromagnetic material, that change in the magnetism in space causes disruption, which for them, 
uh, as was um, very succinctly put by um, uh, Henry Kissinger in January, which was the most important uh, speech ever made in the last 10 years, where he put this word in as he went into in front of uh, Congress. He said, which is very, very important, the old order is in flux and the new order is uncertain. That's what he used. Uh, which basically means we've done something that's now moving, the old order, and we cannot predict anything, we cannot see anything, and all our predictions is gone. One of the reasons is as Planet X comes in, that electromagnetic change in space, as the dust is, is thrown out because of the iron oxide, that's blocking everything and blocking their control. You cannot send a, you know, you cannot have a flight in the air because of all the dust that's coming through. And Quran doesn't call it dust; it's called the smoke. So I'm calling it smoke in, in my presentation. But I'm okay. saying dust because maybe that, that's much more understood in, in the English language. As it, it comes, they are unsure what to do. So they built the underground bases since 1980s. They started huge on. Uh, that is their shelter. They could not go in space because in space also on the other planets they are blocked out. So they have their shelter there, they have their shelter here. And okay. that is... One, that one moment. You agree that this, this uh, is a return. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's a mini solar system that makes comes through every, uh, what, 26,000 years? 3,600 years. 3,600. Yes, the same events were catalogued in, uh, during the exit uh, of the Israelites from Egypt, and the same one uh, from, you know, uh, from Iraq as well, three thousand six hundred years before then. Okay. Uh, two three thousand six hundred years before then, coincides exactly with the same circumstances as what has happened to Earth and climate shift in the Noah uh, Noah time, which was. 11,500 years, I think, okay. some, something like that. Okay. So we can see that there's a cycle, mm -hmm. and the cycle uh, the cycle seems to come in with the same as what this planet is showing, or this many solar system. It has certain features. The first feature, it, it looks like it's face with hands, or, or a knuckle like this. Now, if you have a hand and knuckle, it means you have need five, you know, five accompanying objects. With the with with the central objects, uh, spearing off things that the other uh, objects are catching. Hence, you get the 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 uh, uh, the lines that look like fingers coming out. With the central one looking like a face when you come close to it, but before then, you see it as a bird which is what the pictures are coming now. Mm -hmm. So once I saw the pictures, um, I predicted since 15, no, 20 years ago, in my, you know, I know, wrote about it, the coming, but I thought it was going to be a comet. Um, but I could not see how the comet had a guaranteed five uh, uh, streaks coming out of it. But when I saw this actual planet X of Nibiru with the five planets, that made 100% sense. Um, I can also see why we have cl climatic shift is because of the material inside it, which is iron oxide, which is very interesting. It is uh, a very, very fascinating um, particle or material, nano nanoparticles you can do. Okay, just to hold up right there, because... You're saying you could see 20 years ago. So let's talk a little bit here about what you mean when you can see. Are you you feel that you have a foresight? You you are psychic or what right. do you feel? Um, when when you follow a little bait, they give you guidelines, and the guidelines is a purification of the heart, and they tell you that you see three, through three eyes. The first eye is related to um, witness. So it's a physical eye and hearing. When you hear the sound, 
your senses, your physical touches, mm -hmm. that is you're witnessing something. That's the first line of information. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that is the first level. So you see through the eye. Then you see through hearing. And the hearing is the information coming in through your senses, including the sight, mm -hmm. uh, coming and making information, pieces of information. So that is called hearing. And the third one is through your heart, which encapsulates, it has its own eyes, mm -hmm. It encapsulates what you have been able to uh, break down in, in, in information, and it encapsulates also what you physically saw uh, as um, with your eyes. Not with this eye, but your insight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, remote viewing is split into two. One is remote viewing, and the other one is remote hearing. Mm -hmm. Remote viewing uses the senses. Uh, and the eye is in the senses. And it's able to just use that eye to go in to look uh, outside and also look into the Akashic record. Mm -hmm. The Akashic records is a temporary, call it random area, memory RAM area, which as soon as you switch it off, it goes away. It is basically a current commentary as to what is expected or not expected to happen in the near future and what has happened just in the past. So it could easily be taken off and, and not, not. That is what you're seeing in remote viewing. The next one is remote hearing, which is basically information is being passed between the actors. And you can hear what the actors, their orders coming, going back and forth. The next one is to be able to see with the, with the heart's insight. Mm -hmm. And the heart's insight sees that level and that level as well as what is actually written that doesn't change, mm -hmm. right? I, through meditation or however you want, we have our own way of connecting to, to through the higher self, mm -hmm. uh, to the Patels. Ask them, can I go in uh, into remote viewing and use that? I was, uh, I was strongly told, why would you degra degrade your ability to foresee things when we have given you the highest of foreseeing. Right. Because when you do remote viewing, you do not get the wisdom. Mm -hmm. When you see it through the heart, the, the eye, the sight, you see everything that is in physical as well as um, spiritual. Sure. You also get two things. You get the wisdom as to why it is done and you also uh, have the ability to change if you want to mm -hmm. because you become a participant and you are physically able to go in and change stuff mm -hmm. that's what they call uh, quantum um, the ability to manage quantum uh, level uh, probabilities yes because I can only do that on the heart level okay so I have been given some abilities in that area where I can if I wish something I can change it because I, I use it through the heart. I'm now part of that group and you negotiate and talk to them and say this is this and they say they, this, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a communication going back and forth and in that communication you are giving the okay you change and circumstances will change or you're told you, you know at this moment we take over and you just back off but the wisdom is giving to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, very good. Very nice ex explanation of this. Okay, so this is your motivation. Your motivation is coming from your, uh, your vision through the heart, uh, ability to see back 20 years ago something coming, gradually getting more information about it. Yes. Now, the information, uh, uh, part of the training that Patel gives you is the ability to see the future and the more you are able to live with it and not try to change it for your own sake, the more is given to you. And you are able to see lots of things, but you, as soon as you try to change it to your, to your own self, mm -hmm. the ability is removed. Mm -hmm. That's why a long time ago I stopped playing poker and game and stuff like that. Because I could see what they're doing and I could affect it, and it was affecting me as well, so I stopped. Okay, yeah. yes. So has to no. do, well, in my language, or it would be have to do with you make a choice between power over others or being, uh, you know, 
even with everyone. Be you become a benefactor? Yes. Okay. So when you become a, a, a benefactor, I then come in and say, okay, from what I have, I need to ask, seek permission from them. I have been given permission from them to, to give certain amounts. Right. Because if I give what I know and it impacts it, I have to be responsible mm -hmm. for it. And uh, I do not want to take responsibility. I need to take permission to be alleviated of the responsibility because I work, act within the wisdom. Now, when I come in here, the majority of people will not believe what we are saying. Mm -hmm. What I'm coming out here is people like you and various other people who are managing societies to have an idea of what's, what's taking place. Because if you have the heads understanding what's taking place and not running as headless chickens, at least the society that, uh, that aligns with them have a more stable grounding. Mm -hmm. And basically then you make choice what you want to do with this information mm -hmm. as you give it to others because you are in the knowledge, others are in the knowledge, and each one in their own area. They do not necessarily need to believe me, but at least have an idea in their mind, a block of information saying, Cameron says, these are the possibilities, look for it. And if it matches that, at least now you have a big picture. Mm -hmm. So whether you agree with that or not, keep it in your mind, in the back of your mind, and work with the possibility it could happen, but also the possibility it could not happen. So this is my disclaimer. My disclaimer is, I'm giving this information out freely, in the hope that it, it helps people, but at the same time, it's every person's responsibility to check that this information, uh, co in accordance with, the, with, they, with, with what they can see and understand and, and experience, and the information that they do, they act upon it responsibly, legally. Uh, they, each person is responsible for their own actions because they are responsible for their circumstances and the people around them. And it is, you cannot, uh, depo you cannot give away responsibility and put it onto others. Every person is responsible for what they act. I'm doing what I'm responsible for, which is I have this information, I have access to this media, who others of responsibility are aware of that. I have come here and spoken because I have seen, this is the main purpose, I have seen that the preparation that the preppers are doing is not enough. They, have a, they, are, they are assuming certain things. Mm -hmm. And this is the preparation that needs to, to, do, to be done. What if I tell you that when Nibiru comes or Panitex comes, is going to be flooding most of the places. Would you then change your preparation so it will be waterproof? What, what if I tell you that the sun will not shine for at least a year? Would you then change the preparation for planting a garden, um, vitamin supplements, vitamin D, uh, multivitamins? Would, would you go and purchase more stuff related with light and heat than if you did it with other things. Mm -hmm. Well, if I tell you that when this comes, there will be no money, not even gold will make, it, make, make any things. Would you then go and replenish your food supply and will actually you look at your neighbors as your friends rather than look them as your enemies mm -hmm. and where well, you need to protect themselves yourself? Would you use guns or not use guns because of that? Mm -hmm. This is a kind of motivation. There needs to be a slight change in what you're doing. Now, what you have is, um, as Planet X Nibiru goes around, it's actually now, at this, as we speak, it's spreading along the inside and the outside of the uh, um, solar system. All this um, iron oxide clouds, or smoke, as, as Quran calls them, as it comes our way, we will be able to see it some stage behind the sun coming. So it will be appearing during daylight as a star. My understanding is the first viewing of that, and every person will have to do their own research, but I can give you what I have researched, and this is my understanding. My understanding is December time, this year, 2015, we will see it coming uh, distinct from the sun. 
during March, April, we should see it somewhere where it is noticeable that you have two suns or two bodies during the day. Uh, this is throwing off clouds, left, right and center. As it comes to um, Ramadan time, which will be what the, prophet, you know, what the prophecies say, that during Ramadan there will be a period where the sun and the moon disappear out of sequence, not in the right time, but they will come back again. So that is the sign to look for. Uh, that will happen 2016. Uh, Ramadan starts in June, ends beginning of July. So that goes away. There was a big thing which I couldn't properly understand in Quran, which talks about this in Surah Dukhan, which means the smoke, the, the, uh, the chapter of smoke. What it says is before this, it says, and the people were unsure and were playing. So a long time ago, I was quite clear, to, it was quite clear, it was some kind of, the playing was some kind of an event that was worldwide event, everyone was playing. So I marked it either as the Olympics or as the World Cup, the Soccer World Cup, the Football World Cup. But in the Football World, World Cup, only half, you know, not a lot of countries actually participate in this. But in the Olympics, all the world participate into this and called World Games. And these games happen to be in Rio this year, 2016, in August, starting August 5th, I think, oh, okay. to 21st or something, somewhere along that. So if you go to World, uh, if you go to the Olympics Rio, you will see it starting from the 5th to there. Now, Quran says, while the smoke comes, they are playing. Okay? So a long time ago, I marked it at the four-year cycles of the Olympics. Now, it then said, they are, but they are uncertain. Now, the Christians and the Jews take this, and they have manipulated this, uh, and they are saying they are uncertain about their religion. And this is what I also assumed for a long time, that their uncertainty that they bring in was by destroying all the religions, people will not be sure about God. So they are uncertain about God. But when I saw the pictures with the five planets, I immediately, it came into my mind, they were not uncertain about religion. They were uncertain, or will be uncertain, about the event and what will happen to them. Because what happened in the event? As the moon, as the um, Nibiru comes, or planet X, and spreads its wing, the dust temporarily blocks the light from the sun as we are seeing it. That then brings darkness to the sun and brings darkness to the moon. So it will be two or three year, days. But meanwhile, the earth is shifting, moving into its orbit. And as it moves, the sun comes back again. So then people will be uncertain. What has happened? Will it come our way or will it not come our way? That uncertainty about their own future and how it, the Nibiru or Pantex will interact with earth, that is the uncertainty. So you have an uncertainty then and then you have the playing of the games that fits perfectly well with what Quran is saying happens. Then I, I saw some, I wasn't sure exactly at what point the, um, the hit will take place or the, um, the event where the sky will completely cover, which what Quran will say, says completely cover and overwhelms all people. Now the question is, as I was looking up into um, the Camelot, and there was a date given that was to do with a possible force, a flat, you know, a, 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 um, a biological release that took place during August time. Do you remember me talking to you about that? The, uh, the, the timing. 
So basically, it was in one of your reports uh -huh. that one of your insiders was giving a a biological attack worldwide. That's what's catching me. How can you have a worldwide biological attack? A biological attack worldwide happening somewhere on the 8th of August or something like that. And I said, hold on, when is 8th of August? Bang in the middle of the games. Okay. Me knowing that they cannot do that, they cannot do have a bi worldwide biological because it will affect them primarily. I then came to the conclusion, and I also checked in, in my in various other tech, uh, ways that it's correct. This is the timing when the world will be covered totally by the smoke or the dust from the bureau. Okay, so we will not see the sun. I thought you had said originally. I, I took some notes that something was happening in June of 2016. So is that when, if I understood That's it, Ramadan. it comes in, but it actually covers the sun and the moon for just three days at that time. Then you're saying it comes back in August and covers it for how long? Right. The, the, this, the edge of the smoke or the dust coming our way the edge of June, which is Ramadan time, is matches just overlaps our our view of the sun. It's taking its own orbit. It has its own elliptical orbit. Meanwhile, we have our own elliptical orbit. So as we move, it takes another two days to go above us and <clears throat> then cover us. I see. But as it covers us, it has already covered all the way around. So you're saying it's going to continue, it's going to start before August? It has already done, it's already now spreading, but it's spreading behind us. Uh -huh. So it's now, even if it doesn't come, even if it doesn't come on an August way, within two or three months we will come go into its trail as it went in. Okay, so, and you're talking about, again, this period of time in 2016? Yes. Okay, so... So the games, sometimes the Olympic Games, by the way, have preliminary games, like uh, I think it has to do with the skiing that happens in June, you know? Yes. There's, I'm just saying. It's possible. Yeah. What I'm giving here is data points. Okay. And with the data points, as you go in, there's lots of things hitting at the same time. Sometimes the, the first scenario you come in fits the first data points. And then, this is the thing that the spirit, the scriptures say about the exact timing of this. Mm. It says, no matter, especially for Jesus, when he comes down, he comes down like, a, a, what's called, like a, a thief in the night. This is what it means, physically. It means God or Jesus, whoever is in control, takes takes perspective in all the possibilities that people think of what do they think what, what do they think are the likelihoods then and, and, and that is mapped and then Jesus or God chooses a time when nobody is expecting so no matter what you choose that goes into the formula that says Cameron chose this therefore it must be this mm -hmm. so I'm now giving you the first outline prediction you might come back to say, here's a surprise you didn't think of. The Olympics happens a week before. So a week before could be the case. You see? So sure. what I'm basically saying is anything middle of 2016, expect to be surprised one way or the other. But mm -hmm. eventually, whether it's going to be bang in August, just before August, just after August, depending how it is, you will be surprised as it comes in. Okay, now you're saying, just to get down to the nuts and bolts, just so we can get through this part, basically, this is the passing of this mini solar system, Nibiru, etc., the red dust, and you actually said that in a certain sense, there's going to be a, there is going to be a pole shift. Oh, I haven't said, on and, this one, and okay. And it, it, it is actually, the red dust will protect us from the light of the sun, when the magnetic field goes Yes, so now what's, what's happening with that? Why is it here? Other than the fact that it's actually a reset on a social level to us with the, with, with the world government and whatever. If we just look at it on a, uh, on a planetary astronomical sense, 
you cannot understand this unless you have what I have termed the new science. And the new science I called astroplanetology. Uh, and astroplanetology says that every uh, planet or object that's orbiting and suns and stars and the cosmos are actually living being things. Mm -hmm. And they interact in the same way that you and I interact, we talk, we walk, whatever. They also talk, they walk, they need sometimes a car wash, you know, this coming in and, and, and clear, I guess. Sometimes they need to align certain things. They flock together like birds. They do, they swim, they do, do those things. They need, you need to think of it this way. Mm -hmm. When you think of it this way, you said, okay, what is happening to the sun? The sun is going through the galaxy. Uh, the plane of the galaxy. What is different in the plane of galaxy? Above it, the magnetic field is going one direction. Below it, the magnetic field is going in the other direction. How is the Earth, how is the Sun moving? It's using its electromagnetic arms, eight of them, right? And moving, you can see it through the sunspots, it's moving, and if you match it with a living being like an octopus, an eight uh, octopus, it's exactly the same way it's doing it. It's, it's, it's uh, vibrating or, or pushing in a wave which is like an octopus wave mm -hmm. as, it's, as it swims. So that's why I'm associating uh, octopus to the way the sun moves with its eight arms, with its eight ma magnetic fields. It's using it. Now, if it's going through, if it's using magnetic fields to, to uh, and it's also using a lot of um, uh, currents, the current with the fluctuating magnetic field gives you electrogravitic, which is what they use in, 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 in spaceships or whatever. So, if the sun is using electrogravitics to move in the stars, and also the Quran says it actually swims in the stars, mm -hmm. it, it walks in the stars. So I say, okay, how does this, uh, this rotating one, until I realize in the physics, in electrogravitics, that's what they use. A high current going through a rotating magnetic field gives you change in, 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 in gravity. Now, as it comes below the, um, plan, uh, the galactic um, um, uh, what's called, plane, it then will see that the flow of magnetism goes the other way. So it cannot use the same way. It has to switch and do the other way. You know, it has to switch its arm switch make negative positive positive negative mm -hmm. to be able to continue swimming in an in an in opposite di in an opposite field direction in an opposite field so it needs to do a magnetic shift right okay but if it does a magnetic shift all the other planets are also using rotating magnetism with current around it and also the sun helping by throwing all this um, ejector and all these streams of energetic particles and this, the earth is capturing that and it uses that interacting with, the, with earth magnetism and then the earth has two magnetic poles and it uses that like, just like a ray fish or whatever uh, you know flapping along mm. now if the sun has shifted magnetic poles all the other planets who are catching up like a flock will also need to catch up like um, uh, and we need to shift. Okay, but in order for it to shift the magnetic field, it has to collapse first. Meanwhile, the sun is baking them. Thus, the Earth and the, uh, uh, and the, the other planets don't care of what, what's happening on their suns, but the Creator does, because that's their habitat. So the Creator, guess what it does? It sends a blanket through this mini-solar system and basically says no more sunlight, now we are protected from the sun. Meanwhile, here is the here is iron oxide. If it falls in your atmosphere, it will burn and it will give you heat. So it will stop you from freezing. Right? That's what meteorites do. As, they, as the meteorite falls, you see all this white light coming off. That white light is a microwave and infrared. It basically will burn you if you are in that direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the planets will need to switch. But before the planets, before the, the sun moves, it needs to tell the planets, I'm about to shift. Okay? 
because all the planets are swimming in the wake of the 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 uh, star, uh, the star which is our sun, yes. and the star knows what's going ahead, but the other planets do not know because they are in its uh, uh, they are being dragged. So then, the st- in astro planetology, I'm saying that what you hear this the chatter from the sun and the moon, and this the different planets are actually communication channels. They are talking to each other. The sun, and I'm giving my presentation the sequence in which it will happen. The sun says, get ready, I'm going to shift. Then, boom, all the planets start revving up. And that's why you see all the planets heating. Right. Right? That's one. Also, because there is an incoming body, the sun says, I want to move, change direction. You need to catch up. So, it's a, by the way, I'm feeling a tug. You go and change. All the engines started up. That's why we have all the earthquakes. That's why we have all the volcanoes. That's why we have all the um, the holes falling. Because the earth is stretching. Then you have this um, sinkholes that are falling. Because the earth is stretching. Sinkholes are falling down. So, now all the planets are ready. They were ready since probably 2012. They started. Yes. The engine started. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even before, yes. Because why does the engine start? Because it needs more magnetic field to be shifted, so it can catch up with the sun as the sun keeps changing. Now they will. The sun now says, "Go change your polarity." Before it changes polarity, God has sent this dust or smoke. We are protected. We have heat. Meanwhile, the planet goes off, no polarity, and then shifts back again, and then shifts back to the proper way against the galaxy in the direction of its electromagnetic fields. Every planet will do the same if it needs be. Okay? Once that is done, then what I am saying, what I expect, when Jesus comes down in a cl- white cloud. That is describing the removal of the dust or the smoke from the stars and it says with other things. So my expectation, that is the point of disclosure. Disclosure being given by Jesus of the head with other things coming. Now I've also checked in Quran and it basically says when it comes there will be a sign for them in the heaven where they cannot take their gaze off it. Now, looking at holistically how planets are running, when I look at astroplanetology, the fact that uh, planets are alive, then I look at what happens to the dust of uh, the sun's radiation and, and as it throws matter along. Quran talks about um, um, the planet, um, not Mars, the the, the ring, um, Saturn, Saturn <coughs> as the cleaner, the duster. So what you're seeing around uh, the Saturn's uh, rings are actually is to catch all these streams that's coming off the sun to keep the galactic plane or the, gal- the galactic neighborhood free from all the dust and rubbish and stuff that the, earth, the, the, moon, the sun is throwing off. Okay. So it catches it. It's like a, a, a vacuum cleaner. Right. Meanwhile, you have what's known as the ring makers of Saturn, which mm. we have discussed before. What they do is they come in, use the good material up, and they brush it off and re-turf it. And if there is a large amount of sun's activity, there is a large throwing off material. You need more rings. If Saturn is not enough, they go to the other planets, mm-hmm. Uranus, or they go to Jupiter, whatever, right. and they take from the, um, the asteroid belt all the material from there, and they just lay it around. Mm-hmm. They catch that, okay, because they can calculate how much it needs to go out and how much it stay. Now, having taking that as a normal day-to-day running of the solar system, if there is a lot of dust in our way, 
what do you think the ring makers could do to us? I've heard that there are large crafts, a thousand miles or whatever, at the southern part of the earth, you know, a few thousand you know, miles away. Okay, and this is what Norm Bergram stated in his book Ring Makers of Saturn. He stated that they were on the way here. So perhaps they were coming here in preparation for this. Yes, so what is happening against all the planets that have a strong magnetic field and they have debris on them, Earth will have a debris on, in, in it, Mars will have debris in it, they will put in rings around Earth, just like, uh, uh, just like Saturn. So we will see, day to day, we will see the rings going across the sky. These are artificially laid turf to catch all the dust as we go along and is like a supercharger of, uh, of vacuum cleaning of the solar system. Mm. So within two, three, four, five, seven, ten years, I don't know how long, we will have a ring going around Earth. Right? Okay. And, and, and the ring is not natural. It's laid down by intelligences. Now, if this happens, do you think disclosure has happened by then? In theory... How can it not be in practice? Well, I, even even if this this return of Nibiru happens in the in the red dust and all of this, eventually it's going to be known. But there's there may be also some some things that the ETs, various visiting races, are also using these events to reveal themselves on a certain level because there will be, and there's also a sort of a a motivation by the Illuminati to set a stage. Yes, they have that motivation and they put it. They did that, they planned it for the Third World War. Okay? Yes. Now, shall we go on a uh, one-minute explanation of the Third World War? Or the World War that has taken place. The ETs or whoever is behind the Illuminati have told them, through the Pike's prophecy, that you need to make three world wars. If you look at them, this is what they say. This is the idea. Humanity has three layers of protection that they fall upon uh, as a safety uh, net every time that they have trouble. And the three world wars is to remove each net at a time. The first net humanity falls on, on top is human-to-human -to -human relationship and, uh, and allegiances. So you have then the families that are running and the family and the family the ruling families are the first net because they are the visible ones so the first world war was to remove all the ruling families that's what they did okay and not only that but also all the supporting infrastructure for the ruling families which were the bourgeoisie so the first world war was designed even in the war of trenches go out come back go out come back just like a, a saw cutting and they took the bourgeoisie, put them as captains in the, forth, in the front. So by the time the war finished, the majority of the ruling families and the supporting guys and whoever could take away from them, who were self-sufficient, were, were all removed. Okay? So that's the first level. Okay. The second level says, okay, we rely on governments as a social system. So they brought the Second World War as the clashes between social systems. And then you had the fascism on one hand, the democracy on the other hand, you had then the, uh, um, the um, communists. communists on the other hand, clashing all together. Right. They removed the fascism out of the way. And they put it into non-governmental, non-realistic government, which is, which is the democracy. Okay? That's what they left behind. The next level of protection or um, the, the um, net, safety net, is the spiritual structures which are held by the religious beliefs. Okay. So once you, what they are trying to do is they have the fight of the religious beliefs. Okay. So you have the banner of the Christians and the Zionists. Mm -hmm. You have the banner of the atheists and the communists. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, what do you do with the Muslims? Put them into the communist side. Because we need to have the communists, sorry, the Muslims against the Christians and the Jews. Okay? So they started 
setting up that Third World War for 1958. Hmm. They started the engines running. 19, the design was 1952. Then uh, Stalin knew about it. He started wanting to take a step against it. They killed him. They brought a new person in. right? And then the process was, by the 1960s, beginning of that, World War World would have, the Third World War would have happened. And that's why we have a Cuba crisis. But who put a plug to that? You have your president uh, who basically said, I'm not going to have a shooting war. Mm -hmm. Okay? Meanwhile, as they were trying to progress the Third World War, they went into and camped into the Caribbeans as their safe havens against nuclear fallout. Uh, the Caribbeans, suddenly for two or three years, just had constant frost. And it killed all their food and it killed all the animals, including in Miami and various others, all the southern Texas and whatever. For two or three years, there was famine taking place. So they said, okay, let's go to the sea. For a few hundred miles, as they were fishing, there was no, no fish. So they said, stop. Okay, we cannot have a world war. We need to go in safe places. Okay. Push that 20 years ahead. Move that to 20 years, 1980. So they decided, okay, we're going to move the religious war, 1980. You have to think that 1958 or 1955 is when they were planning to do it. So they had a long, plenty of time before 2012 to do all this revelation. So they're preparing, it's on the table. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't do it because they couldn't have the, the fight to, to destroy this, the... the the safety nets and the religious one. So they said, okay, now, us, us, going back to the first thing we discussed with regard to Muslim Brotherhood, they prepared the Muslim Brotherhood as the bearer of the Islamic uh, uh, flag on the Third World War. That's why they, um, they prepared it after the First World War. They prepared the Muslim Brotherhood in the 20s in preparation for the Third World War. Yeah. Okay. So the Muslim brothers were waiting. They had all this Nasser and all that stuff. They were, you know, not Nasser before them. Mm -hmm. They were preparing the Muslim brother to take over, but they couldn't. Right. Then what happened was, then you have the 1980s. They then had the the ability to go to the moon. They had all the bases underground them. They dug it and fine. Let's go and have the second term of of Carter. Todd talks about this. Um, what's his name, David Todd? Uh, no, um, um, the Illuminati guy who came in the 70s. You, you mean David Icke? No, no, Todd, T-O-D-D. Um, um, he's one of the Illuminatis who came out and then, um, I think his name is David Todd, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure yes. which person you're referring to. He basically was one of the uh, Illuminatis who came out of the 70s explaining what were, what were, what they were doing and all the black magic they were doing, stuff like that. And he basically said in the ninth, beginning of the 1970s, they were told to prepare for Carter's second term as him taking the reign for um, the world, which meant that they were prepared for the Third World War. That's why they, you have them going into Afghanistan, Russians going to there, you have Czechoslovakia, and you have all the other ones that, that started taking place as preparation for Third World War. Guess what happens? They have uh, somebody called Khomeini decides that instead of the Muslim Brotherhood taking control of the Muslim world, Khomeini's have all this revolution in his mind. And the revolution is spreading along all the Middle East. It's going to North Africa, it's going to Turkey, it's going all around, around the world. And, and, the, and the Shiites now, some you know, new group they didn't know what before, is now coming and taking time to take control of the Muslim part of that. But they have not dealt with the Shiite before. Because as they were planning all this, in the end of 18th, 19th century, they said, okay, what are all the religions available? So they looked at Islam and said, who is available? You have, you have, the, Muslims, you have the Sunnis and you have Shiites. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, let's negotiate with the Shiites first. 
If they go to take the bear out, fine, we'll, we'll let them have it. Otherwise, we'll give it to the Sindhis. So they came in 1920 after the world, world War I, with the, Chris, with, with the British coming in, and told the Shah, would you like to be our friend? And the Shah said, no, no, you, you are uh, a foreigner, we will not deal with you. Okay? So that's fine. Um, there was a revolution that took place uh, across all the Middle East, by, done by the Shia, at the beginning of the 20s, 1920s. They picked up all the heads of uh, the, uh, the, ruling, uh, uh, the clergy and they threw them away to Iran. Said, go away, we don't want you. Stop the revolution. The revolution stopped. Meanwhile, the, the religious uh, heads said, hold on, we have a whole Vatican-like in, in Iraq and various other places. We want to start teaching these. They are empty. So, okay, the British said, if you come in, you sign that you are not going to go into politics. Yeah, yeah, we don't go into politics. You will ensure that nobody, uh, no Shiites will go into politics. They did that. So the Shiites from 1920s went undercover. Mm -hmm. So when they, all, when they did all the planning, they did it with the Muslim Brotherhood thinking that this is a, this is a Muslim side. They were not anticipating that there was another side called the Shia because they said they just signed. We can do anything to them. Meanwhile, they were empower, empowered in 1980, 1979, and they came onto the scene and the Illuminati got, well, hold on, where are these guys? What is their story? Well, who, who's, who's playing in our turf? These, well, we do not have connection to them. Okay, stop the game. So they stopped 1980s. Whoa. Have a, okay, let's have a shouting match, shooting match. Let Saddam go and destroy Iran. It will take three months. My information came directly from them. We will sort this in three months out. Three months went to three years. Three years went to eight years. They kept winning. So then the Americans came in and said, foot into, you know, they shot down the Iranian airline and said, we are now coming. If, you want, if you're not stopping it, we are going to have a sh you know, shooting match with us as well. The Iran says, okay, we're going to stop. In 1980s, when they stopped the Third World War, they shifted yet another 20 years. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then they went into 2001, 2001, they couldn't have it, went to 2011. 2011, they had all this revolution, trying to get it. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they're trying to get some of the Shiites on their side. Now, they have the Shiites on their side, whoever's ruling. I will not name names on this. On this. So they have people who work for the Illuminati in the Shiite side. Okay. They said, okay, now we have the Shiite side. So, 2013, let's go for the war. Sorry, 2012, 13, let's have a shooting match. Mm -hmm. By then it's too late. Meanwhile, they have 20, 30, 40 years delay in their plans. Right, okay. So now it's all uncertain. Okay. But also, as to get back to the very beginning of our talk, we're actually in this funnel, as you called it. Yes. As, as, or nexus. as it happens. Or nexus, yes. Where they actually they have, they've gotten to this time. But it was also said, and there was, you know, all kinds of evidence of this, coming, focusing on 2012. It's like they could see as far as 2012. So yes. they thought 2012 was the change. But this is where people were deceived. Because 2012 wasn't the change, it was the beginning of a change. It was entering this thing you, you're calling a funnel, and I might call a milestone or whatever. And it's, it's, it's this pocket of time. 2012 was the change. But it's but the beginning not, of the no. change. Because what no, happens no, the change from in, there... Not in, our, not, in, not in our sphere. It is the change in the planning sphere, where a whole block of time and space was put in front of us. Yes. And this is the change. Right. And then all the things is just as time takes place, adjusting to this new flow. Okay, but right. So, but the last couple of years, it's, it's sort of reorientation, you might say. Yes. Right? And so now at this time, they still want to have their world war, though. Not anymore. Not yet. Because of planet, because of planet X is coming. They don't think they need to do so no, much? No, no, no. Because you also talked about... Planet X comes through, all this happens, pole shift, etc. Yes. But they're really looking also to eliminate large numbers of population. Yes. Now, what is happening is this, is because they don't have, the, the, the 
position of safety for them, their sanctuaries, is now either on the planets, the moon, or under earth. Right. But when the Buddha comes, they have no connection, they cannot go anywhere. So, so they have to leave before or, or no, not? No, no. They will still want to have access to earth. Right. Now the problem is, their people on earth, who are in the underground bases, if they start a shooting match, the Russians have told them, your sanctuaries are fair game. Uh, which means if you sh start shooting us now, we will basically bomb the hell out of your, uh, your underground bases. Which means they cannot have a war while this is taking place. Okay. Now, of course, people are going to wonder, are they going to be killed by this pole shift? Is, you know, what's going to happen to them? Right. Um, everything now is my understanding and this cannot be done scientifically until it actually happens. But this is my take on things. Mm -hmm. uh, all the data indicates that when the two timelines co co come in into this funnel, uh, people will gi be given a choice. Do you want to go on one side or the other? Once they do, they are stuck into that and the scenario will continue. Uh, it's known as the, um, in, in Arabic it's called Qadr. Qadr means like funnels where you, where you have uh, in water coming into streams, mm -hmm. and the streams will go separate. It becomes very difficult to, sh to go over from one stream to the other. Sure. Okay. The two streams that are, will, be, will be kept during uh, the uh, smoke or the dust as it covers, uh, people will either go with the Illuminati side and, res and s feel attracted to them and allegiance to them or associate with them or people who will leave the Illuminati and will go with normal people. So now you have people going underground in the sanctuaries or staying outside with normal people. This is the first cut of the cake with the, two, uh, with the ability of people to decide whether you want to be associated or uh, be attracted in the locus into that direction or that direction. When it takes, my estimate is uh, it will be one year, not more, for the dust covering Earth. Um, for other reasons we can talk about later. But it will be because there are certain prophecies. I have tons of data that tells me uh, that one year is the max for this before Jesus comes down on the cloud with all the paraphernalia that comes up behind him, with all the disclosure. When he comes down, at that point, people are separated into... The, those who are active, I'm talking about active, not normal people, those who are on the scene, they will be the Chinese Russians, they will be the Americans Illuminati, and then there will be another new group, which is the Shiite, is Sunni, if you want to call it a combination, led by, you know, a young person, who is later on called Mahdi. Okay. What ISIS does, which is beneficial to him, unknown to them, what ISIS does is break down all the borders right. in the country. Yes. Now, whoever just defeats ISIS will, will have a bounty of all of that. Now, that's 40% of the world's oil in one go, one shot. Mm -hmm. That's a new country with all new allegiances. Mm -hmm with no prior history dealing with the, with, the, with the cabal, okay? That's a new scene coming in. Now, what the uh, scriptures are saying is at the point when Mahdi's army come and takes over Jerusalem at exactly that day, and he takes it over because whoever was running Jerusalem did something to them. And the, and the scriptures talks about being bombed, 
by a nuclear bomb and even gives specific cities where they were bombing nuclear. And it was done by them. So that gives an excuse for Mahdi to come in and take Jerusalem. But apparently from the scriptures it says that if he continued on, the cabal would have destroyed all of the land. They have like under nuclear, underground nuclear explosive, whatever. They would destroy all of it. Mm -hmm. So to stop no flesh remaining, Jesus comes as a, as a separator and says, okay, let's have a peace. The reason Jesus comes is to tell the cabal, listen, you have space, you can now act. But meanwhile, here's a new kiddo in the block. So the cabal have their own scenarios. One of the scenarios that they have is the uh, alien invasion and the false prophet and all that stuff. They will feel compelled to activate that scenario. Meanwhile, we have somebody else who's making new allegiances, which we say is the incarnation of Patel, of the... Um, the Beit Allah, the family of God. Okay, That's meaning the Mahdi. Yes. Are you saying the Mahdi? Yes. Okay, uh, but... That's a separation. Now I'm we saying. start separating. All right, and, and, but the, when you're saying Jesus comes down, there are uh, diff, different groups that say different things about this, of course. Uh, it doesn't matter. When, it when is that, Christ consciousness. When, 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 when you see something in the sky for a whole day as that thing is stopping and the earth rotating and you see that all the dust is being removed from there, whoever that is, whether it's a planet, sorry, whether it's a, it's a craft, whether it's a human being, okay. whether it's an ascendant being, right. whether it's an alien, or whether it's son of Mary, yes. okay? Okay. In, in flesh, mm. that is the one who will arbitrate. Hmm. Okay? To ar arbitrate the two sides. I see. Okay. At that point, the arbitration is, is as follows, and this is written in the scripture, that once an arbitration is made, if you go against it, you are regarded as criminal. Bang! You, 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 judgment is taken on you. That's, that's the exact wording. Once arbitration is taken place, and you go against it, judgment immediately takes effect. Mm -hmm. So now what's happening is, uh, Jesus comes down and arbitrates. What the Illuminati side will do, will say, Jesus is not Jesus. He is an alien. Here's our alien. Now, bang, they become criminal. Okay? Mm -hmm. And judgment takes place. What takes it? Something else then comes. Be it be it um, galactic wave, be it nemesis, be it a new form of a cloud, or whatever. At this time, as we speak, this is being blocked from view. We are not able to see what it is that oh, okay. takes on the judgment side. Hmm. But definitely what happens is uh, a, a hit is going to be put, struck on land. The hit is so strong that America will be made in two lands with a river, a big river put on, in place in the middle of them. Mm -hmm. That's what the scripture says. It's called Saba. It describes it as Saba. Which basically means a, 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 a river goes in between the two lands. Yes. Okay. Which we would call the New Madrid Fault. Yes. Was split. Yes. Now, what it also says is when it hits it, it seals all the underground bases. So they cannot come up. Mm -hmm. And what they do is petition Jesus, or whoever is the one who's arbitrated, asking them, we would like to come out. And he said, no, judgment has been made. You will stay there for a while because you have taken your way. Because if I bring you out, you will do the same thing. You will repeat what you have just told. But we have made a judgment. But when the hit takes place, Jesus provides sanctuary, which is called the seven seals. Guess who supports him in doing the sanctuary? Mahdi. Also, in scriptures, it talks about Russia and China. So, 
the sanctuaries will be somewhere in Chad, in Iran, in the um, deserts of um, China, in um, in Soviet in, in in Russia. There will be sanctuaries in between mountains where whole mountains are going to be covered, and the mountain range in upland is the sanctuary holding enough for all the people. Mm. Okay? That will be the sanctuary. In the head of the sanctuary, the scripture says this, that when he comes, they, anybody comes in, there will be a fire that basically cleanses the person as he goes through it. Mm. The fire has many effects. It, also, it removes all the, um, the rubbish that we've been put in all the chemtrail stuff that we have, uh, all the uh, electromagnetic um, attachment that we have, which are gins or whatever, mm -hmm. we go in as new. Meanwhile, it marks your body as a new, in a new frequency. Mm -hmm. So you go in in a new frequency. Mm -hmm. Okay? The scriptures also says, that as you come in, something is placed on your head, like a hat, that gives you, downloads all knowledge of what has happened in the past and the future, and you become a completely um, uh, full being, mm -hmm. understanding all things, Absolutely. from the children up to the, uh, up to the old people. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that is what happens inside. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Illuminati says, what is coming, we need to run away, just like we did before. So this was a trial run for them. This planet X coming is a trial run for them to go into their boroughs. I see. To, to make them entrained into actually having the same reaction yet again when it, the, 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 whatever comes in, which currently is blocked, we cannot see that, mm -hmm. whatever comes in will cause them to have the same flight reaction. Mm -hmm. And they will go, guess what? into the underground tunnel yet again, mm -hmm. in which case they will be sealed, okay, and they will, theirs will be reset. They will reset their uh, cycle of uh, souls mm. for another 20,000 years. Mm -hmm. Because what the uh, Ahlul Bayt, the Patel said, that when we planned yours uh, for sons of Adam, we planned it for 100,000 years. The first 20,000 years is a years of tyranny. The next 80,000 years is years of uh, enlightenment. So the problem is the Illuminati have failed the years of tyranny. tyranny. They will be given another 20,000 years. Some of them will fail. They will be given another 20,000 years. And that's why you have the 40,000, the, um, 40, 45,000, P, P45s, P52s, whatever. They fell the first one. The first one split. Okay, now, who do they say, the scriptures, who do they say is underground? They say it's Yag Yagog and Magog. Yagog are the reptilians, and Magog are, the, uh, are their servants who they have uh, manipulated. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So whoever goes underground will, hold, will, 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 will meet the Yagogs and the Yagogs will convert them to Magogs who are the Greys. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Well, that does coincide with uh, other testimony that we have. So the first 20,000 years after they go underground, they could get, become Greys. Yes. The first 20,000, when they come out, they become the benevolent ones. Mm. The others will not want to go. They come back, go down again. Another 20,000 years, or whatever happens to them, that's the 40,000 years. That is the one that has just visited us. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Trying to give reason what has happened to them. Trying to explain, justify what has happened to them. That's what they're coming the the um, okay. The Illuminati and the way they think is how the Greys think, yes. taking to the extreme. Sure, absolutely.